Hendricks with a front headlock. See if he can score off this. He'll try to pull his opponent's head down. Now the Derek Madoff using a short drag to get out of it, almost turned the corner. Zach Esposito of Oklahoma State lost at 149 pounds earlier tonight. Defending champion at 149. Oh, neutral, man, here we go. And a Derek Madoff strength is his standing position, his takedowns. All right, man, here we go. Dad. Johnny Hendricks is the defending champ in this weight class. Johnny Hendricks, he's so good. He's uh, real tough, real strong, but sometimes he wears out and he has to manage his match so that he doesn't go oh. out of steam. He spends so much energy. Here we go. Well, Derek Monoff came in last year feeling as though he could make All-American honors and he Lost early, it was out of the tournament, didn't place. Jeff, is there a this difference in the style here, of the Europeans? Russell here. Basically, they're standing, lead leg, bent over, and it's much more from the reaching of the tie and timing your opponent. They practice much more technique than Americans do, where Americans are unbelievably better in shape. Abdur Akmanov, if there's a question mark, it is about his condition. So because, he fades. because, Jeff, their style is somewhat different, does, does it make them a little difficult to wrestle? The Russians show everybody how difficult it is to wrestle Eastern Europeans. The old Soviet bloc was tremendous. All of those independent states now won their first Olympic medals in the sport of wrestling. So it's a, it's a big sport over there. Derek Bonoff shows the skill that can come from those countries. Well, he does a lot of misdirection stuff. And he hasn't wrestled a lot this year. And I think it could be by design because Europeans don't, don't wrestle that much. And, you know, not like our college season. And so, you know, it could be a factor because he's good. He's not as accomplished on the mat because of his background. But this could cause some problems for him. I think a great example would be like European hockey. It's much more technical where American hockey is much more physical and brutal. Yeah, one minute, yeah one brutal minute. isn't fair. Just right here, physical. Red, 40, 40 red. 10 is our referee. Stop moving. This is where Abdurak Manov can unload. That's where the Europeans are very good. When there's a lot of motion, they just simply stop. Breaking on my whistle. We're staying on top of the head, man. Let's go. Be ready. Abdurak Manov up from 157 last year where he did not place, like he said. But he had a very good year, and there is two. show the uh, coaching staff for American and we call it a staff because they actually need a translator for Abdurak Manoff. So coach will say one thing and then the translator will yell that out to the wrestler. You can't go across the throat or the mouth or anything that uh, inhibits breathing. There's Mark Cody, the head coach for American. So the officials always looking out for 
the illegality of any kind of hold that cuts the wind uh, or the breathing off on the throw. And they had their first All-American last year. Now he's got two with a couple of shots at making the final. Great job by Abdurakana. Josh Glenn is the other one you're referring to there, Jeff. And the 184-pound weight class, he's the top seed for America. And in freestyle, that would have been big points, which is what they wrestle over in Europe. But Abdurakana is trying to learn the American style, and you have to control the person on his back getting a takedown first in order to get back points. For those uneducated, Jeff, what do you mean the difference in the style? Why would that have been a point in the style he's used to and not here? Three styles, 90 degrees, and you don't have to hold them for a count. American style, 45 degrees with a two count to earn points. And it's a control issue. You have to uh, establish control in collegiate wrestling. You don't have to establish control. It's about exposure in freestyle. You expose them, you score. In collegiate, you have to control, get the takedown, and then but what I like about Abdur Khanov here is he's taking advantage. He's circling back in, shooting on Hendricks towards the edge. He's got the warning right now, so he's wrestling very smartly. At the end of this period, if nothing happens, we're going to get you over to the other semifinal between Ryan Chirella and Joey Bracamonte for an update there. The pace has slowed tremendously now. He's almost got deep enough with that penetration step to get his hips in tight, but Bergmanov able to fend him off, holding the wizard, holding his arm over Hendricks' left arm like that, which we refer to as a wizard, it's a counter to a leg shot. And this second period is going to come to an end. Let's get you over to the other semifinal between Torella and Brancamani. Here's Queen Red. Brian Torello is leading three to two with 51 seconds to go in the third period. This is Bracamonte on top from Oregon. And Torello, undefeated from Michigan. Three to two right now. It's a key note here, though, Torello does have riding time. So, in fact, he's actually up by two. Yeah, he has a minute 52 of riding time in that match. One, one, one red! He'll definitely get a point for that. No way for Bracamonte to erase it. Now back here between... Abdurik Monov and Hendricks. Abdurik Monov has just escaped, tied the score, no riding time issue. It comes down to the takedown. A couple of shots by Hendricks, but didn't even come close to penetrating the hips of Abdurik Monov. There's been a lot of movement in this match. It'll be interesting to see whose tank has more gas in it. Hendricks starting to pick up the pace again. Couple of shots. Another one. Oh, Dirk Mano did a smart thing, right, right. in. And he needs to shoot now. He needs to take the next shot. I don't know how you, a coach says that in his language, but he better have some kind of code word to take the next couple of shots. Even if it's a Hollywood shot That's where you're right. barely yep. There it was. And, but but he, got, he got the warning. Now Hendricks has the advantage. It's not a bad call by the official. We saw that coming, but the crowd didn't like was it seemed the third bottle took the shot just a second too late. For those, again, uninitiated to wrestling, guys, what just happened there? Why did Hendricks get a point? It's stalling. Yeah, and that was his second point. He had play. taken three, four shots in a row of Durham bottle countering, backing out. He wasn't initiating. And then when they hit him with the stall, it just happened that he took the shot right as they called him for stalling. So it was just a second too late. So now what's the strategy for Hendricks? With 32 seconds remaining, is he just going to try to stay away? He hasn't been. He hasn't been. He could take the warning. That's exactly right. He, he could back up just like that. But he doesn't want a hot dog. The coaches don't want him to hot dog, but he just can't help it. He's warned that there's plenty of time left. He has been warned now. He can't back up so much. But see, Abdurakhanov not showing the urgency he needs to. There's got to be some acting involved here somehow. He's got to show, he's got to go after it three or four times. Oh, geez, I can't believe he's adjusting his head here, and he's just going to play and run out of time. How about that? Johnny 
Hendricks, the defending champ.